Hi, I'm Jonathan Stein, Managing Editor of Project Syndicate. Today I'll be talking with Slavomir Sharkovsky, who's the founder of Krytyka Polityczna, uh, a movement of Polish liberal intellectuals, artists, and writers. He's also the director of the Institute for Advanced Studies in Warsaw. And we'll be talking about uh, political developments in Poland, uh, relations with Russia, and with the European Union. So, um, Poland. Uh, you know, in your last column, I was, I was struck by something. Uh, it was on Russiagate, uh, you know, this, uh, the, this influence through uh, the defense minister uh, and his various cronies. And I was wondering, um, you know, Russian influence is very much in the news in Central Europe, and there's a lot of concern about it in the EU and among liberals and social democrats in, in don't forget about your own country <laughs> right that's true too uh but but clearly uh, it's an issue in in central europe as well um but i'm a little bit surprised by poland because you've got a nationalist party in poland mm -hmm. and polish nationalism has traditionally defined itself against Russia. I mean, for very deep-rooted historical reasons. Isn't it uh, the best cover? But, okay, but what, so what is the, what is the, uh, what is the link between, uh, you know, Polish nationalists who've, you know, traditionally been, you know, very anti-communist and anti-Russian? That's not true. Actually, as uh, perfectly mentioned uh, recently, Tim Snyder, yeah. Polish right uh, traditionally used to be pro-Russian, right? Not uh, like anti-Russian or anti-communist. Actually, even bef even after the war, the leader of Polish nationalists um, openly um, um, agreed to be a part uh, of the communist regime, a exactly to put this and to, to save the, the ethnic nationalist agenda and to put it inside the, 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 the communist system. The, the beautiful yeah. novel about, about it wrote Czesław Miłosz, so you can read it in, uh, in English. So it's not true, it's not true. This is one thing. And another thing is that uh, if you look what's going on with the nationalist parties and populist parties everywhere in the world, they this way or another, uh, find support from Kremlin. Yeah. And why, like, you know, Orban, Viktor Orban, the, the brother of Kaczynski, uh, started his career as the most anti communist uh, um, politician in the region. Yeah. Now he's pro Russian. I can believe that Kaczynski can change his mind as well. So is this more of an elite? Uh, you know, kind of move toward Russia, or is it, or is there really sort of mass support for it in Poland? No, no, no. Actually, yeah. there is no, no, not at all a mass support for it in the society. But listen, we still don't know uh, a lot about it because it's quite new thing. Uh, the journalists uh, of the leading Polish dailies, and now also Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung and the Guardian, they're finding new and new facts about yeah. this hidden direct or indirect contacts with Kremlin or Russian intelligence or even Russian mafia uh, between people, the closest people to Defense Minister Macierewicz and number right. two in the ruling camp and those like Russian circles, let's, let's put it this way. Even if Macierewicz it's, is not a, an agent, and probably he's not. He's the defense minister yes. that we're talking about, but right? He behaves like an agent. Yeah. But the only possible hypothesis to explain all those different things, okay, uh, is like looks very Russian, right? Let's put it right. this way. And especially because it's happening in other countries as well, and not just in Central Europe. And listen, for more than 250 years, out of 315 year, 300 years in our modern history, we were either part of Russia or strongly uh, controlled by Russia. Right. Do you think that Russians just forgot it yeah. and they don't have an interest to do it anymore if they, you know, intervene in, in USA and in other countries? Yeah, well, the interesting thing, I mean, and, uh, uh, discouraging, is that, 
given that it's happening in Hungary, especially Slovakia to, to a lesser extent, it really means that the EU is powerless. Because if you were going to invoke, for example, Article 7 and start uh, imposing sanctions, either denying, fu suspending funding, EU funding, or even uh, political, you know, voting rights in the in the in the European Council uh, for Poland, you're going to have Hungary veto it or Slovakia veto right. it, right. and uh, you know, so it doesn't seem that the EU, the EU may be designed for one state going, uh, you know, in the wrong direction in terms of democratic criteria at a time. But if two states go at the same time or, or more, then they're helpless. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Well, it's a big disappointment. And, all, well, and also it's like, you know, all those plans for uh, multi-speed EU, it's also another good alibi. Right. Um, um, you know, Juncker's plan or Macron's plans are focused on Eurozone. Pol Poland is not a part of it, okay? Yeah. At the same time, Poles are the Euro fanatics. 88% of Poles uh, support uh, accession, yes. okay? But also, if you look at the numbers concerning refugees, it's a great alibi right. for Kaczynski because Poles say, we can resign from those funds even if we are the biggest beneficiary. Right. We 52 percent even would answer in the an answer in a, in a public polls that we can even leave EU uh, if it's the condition not to take any refugees. So people can hold these two contradictory thoughts in their in their heads at the same time. That we that you know we know we want the EU because we know how much it benefits us, but. As soon as uh, we're asked to meet an obligation of the EU, we reserve the right to say we don't need the EU anymore. Exactly. You know? This is a, this is the set thing, but it's a very useful thing for Kaczynski. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Well, I think we're going to have to. Uh, but listen, like you yeah. know, Polish society has this gene of freedom. Yeah. And maybe liberalism is not strongly like you know rooted, and rooted right. or embedded in a in a Polish. Uh, you know, experience and Polish tradition, but it doesn't fit to tyranny yeah. at all. Yeah. So, so like. Well, that's room for hope. Definitely. Okay. Thanks so much for Thanks talking so to us.